You know what? If things go wrong, Katie. Yeah. And we have to get rid of the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is not so bad. And my neighbour's coming out now. I'm gonna. I can't do this. Ah. Oh no. Out. People say that the best way to get to know a new car is to live in it for 24 hours. Literally nobody says that. People say that the best way to get to know a new car is to live in it for 24... Who the f*** wrote this script? So today we're with my new to me 1999 Jaguar S-Type V8 and we're going to attempt to spend the next 24 hours in it. That means eating, drinking, sleeping, working, crying most probably and toilet... toileting. That's going to be an interesting one. I packed my bags, filled the car with some creature comforts. It's fast approaching 2 p.m. now and so by the time I get in the car I will not be able to leave the car until 2 p.m. tomorrow. Wish me luck. <laughs> Stepping into the Jag for the last time for 24 hours and uh, here we go. don't know if you can see that but it is exactly 13.45 on Friday the 4th of November. So, we won't be leaving until quarter to two on Saturday the 5th. I'll just try and move this passenger seat forwards. <sighs> Not the best way is to do this. So one thing I'm hoping that doesn't really happen over the next 24 hours or so is hopefully the alarm doesn't go off too much. On my car, this is the electronic fob that comes with it. The lock and unlock are not working at all. I actually put a new battery in myself, but it doesn't seem to have, have worked. The boot release works, but I'm not gonna do that now because I can't get out and shut it if I do. The alarm does like to go off. Essentially, if you open the car and don't put the key in the ignition, within about 30 seconds, the alarm screams its head off. I've just moved the driver's seat forward as I did with the passenger seat a second ago. And the very first thing I've noticed is money. There's literally money just on the edge of the carpet here is, wow, two pounds and one pence. And if you can see that, that's fairly substantial considering I paid 1,400 pounds for this car. So now I paid 1,398. I wonder if there's anything else. <gasps> no. <gasps> <There's>, <gasps> You're joking. That is a key to a Mercedes. Someone's spare or main key is in my car. That's exactly like the key my old CLK had. This is hilarious. What else can we find? I'm going to add this to my little collection in here. That is brilliant. I have to admit, it's a really lovely place to sit. Now, when you are in the back, you notice some of the cheaper stuff, like this plastic door handle surround is, is pretty pretty nasty to be honest and also the back of the seat it does have nice leather pockets but the back is pretty rough along with whatever this is I guess some sort of storage compartment it's all very uh, plasticky and feels you know does does feel cheap but you know what I don't mind ever so much the headlining like I say is really nice and isn't sagging at all which is which is great and I didn't know this until I literally picked the car up but it has a rear blind, which is obviously up for privacy because I am just sat outside my house in a residential area. Let me just really quickly interrupt proceedings to show you something cool. Now, unfortunately, I'll explain a little bit more later, but the Jag has got a little bit of a problem, which means, well, I'm probably not gonna be able to go and drive it to find food. Um, so my good friends at Y Food have got in touch to ask if they could sponsor this video again, which of course I said yes, because it means I can have a great supply of these. These are meal replacement drinks, not smoothies, not protein shakes. They're fully meal replacements. And so for today and this task, they're really the perfect fit. These Y food meal replacements are actually smart foods as well, which mean all of the sort of recommended nutrients you need in your day are included in these. They're actually also gluten and lactose free. So great for people who are intolerant to those things. They also have a vegan range of drinks if you're that way inclined as well. These keep you full for about three to five hours, which is super useful. And generally, these are a really good thing if you're in a rush, you're in a hurry, you've got to get somewhere and you need to eat and you don't have time 
take a wife with you and you, you're covered. Today, that's not so much of an issue because I'm literally have the opposite problem. I'm confined to this small space for 24 hours, but the good news is they're also really tasty. Waifu do also do bars and powders as well, so there really is something for everyone. I encourage you to go and check out their website and have a look. If you want to make an order as well, you can get a nice exclusive discount from my channel on the screen now or in the link in the description. Thanks so much to Waifu for sponsoring this video and making it possible. Now, I think I'm gonna have a look and try out the bed situation. So I'm just gonna move the bedding onto the floor to give myself a little bit more space and that actually tucks in there really nicely. I'm gonna pop this bag over there in the corner, this with some camera equipment and some other bits and uh, oh, it reveals the lovely, I mean these, these seats are gorgeous actually, really comfortable. Uh, I've got a bit of an armrest there which can double up as a bit of a cup holder for my bottle of water and interestingly in this car you can pull the seats down. I'm thinking I'll sleep with my head in the boot and my feet sticking out here. I think it should just be long enough for that to be comfortable. Oh wow! My feet are now touching the back of the boot, but as you can see, they're fully stretched and my head isn't even at the end here. I think we're gonna have quite a comfortable night's sleep. And I love the fact that these two grab handles are perfect position for me to pull myself up. And we've got reading lights, like you would have on an airplane, one on each side, just like that. This is okay, I'm just very conscious that it's broad daylight and I'm in a residential area and there's people walking past the car and God only knows what might be going through their minds, but who cares? Because I'm in my gold or champagne gold jam. Let's talk history on this car because again, I've not really had a chance to properly look through the files on this. Now, amazingly, I mean, look at this. I think I showed you it in the first video, but we've got the original S-type folder and it looks like that in this gorgeous, I presume, leather wrapping, the Jag logo and S-Type. And inside we've still got the original purchase card with the original owner's name and the registration on it. Marshall Motor Group. There's a quick guide which if you open it up has my Jag in its exact specification showing me what all the switch gear does. And actually, interestingly, this one shows the cars having the cassette storage there, but mine has the very, very rare satellite navigation option. Then we've got the Total Care Handbook, which is the service history, complete with original pen on paper of the original purchase date, which was the 25th of September, 1999, look at that. That's unbelievable. And then going forward, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven stamps in the book, most of which are Jaguar main dealer. I just find this really cool because when you buy a car like this, you're buying you're buying sort of a piece of history as well because there's so many things have probably happened in this car, some of which probably don't wanna know about, but you know what I mean. A lot of memories have been had in this car and the fact that I've got, you know, actual pen on paper written by someone, well, 23 years ago now when this car was picked up, I just find quite fascinating. It's almost, you know, it's, well, this is history, isn't it? Quite literally, it's the service history, but you know what I'm trying to say. I'm kind of looking forward to it getting dark. Luckily in the UK, the clocks went back a few days ago. And so it gets dark here at around 4.30, 5 p.m. now, I want to say. And obviously it's probably what, about quarter past, half past two now, don't know. It's not been long. It's only quarter past two. We've been here half an hour. Feels like at least an hour already. But it will be dark in two, three hours or so, which means it will just feel a little bit more cozy and private and. 
I'll maybe be able to sleep a bit because obviously sleeping is a great way of passing the time. So quick update guys, it's 14.48 now. Uh, so we've been in the car, grand total of one hour and three minutes. And I've just finished all of my catching up on stuff I needed to do. And um, now I really don't know what's what's next. I have to say, top marks for the Jag. It's really comfortable. There's a little bit of a spanner in the works in that, unfortunately the other night, my fiance and I went out for a drive in, in this car just because we wanted to and we, we love it and it's just a, a lovely thing to drive at night, the way the dials all light up. Maybe I'll show you in a bit. The other night when we went out for this drive, the car overheated, the dial went all the way up to, to hot. I mean, the first thing that was strange was the heating wasn't coming on. Even when the car got to temperature, the, there wasn't any hot air coming through, which I thought was strange. And then the water gauge went pretty much all the way up while simultaneously, noticing a little smell and then very quickly after steam coming away from uh, under the, the bonnet. So pulled over and shut the car down. It was really obvious that the steam was coming from the upper left side of the bonnet as, as, as you were looking at the car. So my point being that my plan for this video and spending 24 hours in the car was to go and get like a McDonald's or just basically go find drive throughs when I need refreshments or food. But unfortunately, I think I'm probably going to need to involve Katie now, my fiance, who's in the house behind me. And she might have to wait on me a little bit with food and drink, which is going to be really nice because she's amazing at cooking, actually. But I feel kind of bad because obviously the plan was to drive this car around. But sure you can understand I don't really want to drive it until I've got the coolant issue sorted it'd be a shame to break the car for the sake of trying to get a McDonald's hey honey hey sweetheart um you okay yeah how are you <laughs> I'm fine a bit bored yeah um basically you know how the car had that little coolant issue yeah I think it's quite a big coolant issue and I don't really want to drive the car is there any chance you could bring me something out if it's not too much yeah, hassle? Of course. No, of course. Yeah, I'll bring you something now. You're a lifesaver. Thank you so much. Love you. Bye. Bye. Poor Katie. How she puts up with me, I will probably never know. Hi fiance. Hi, yeah. So I'm just um I'm just living in my car today for a video, literally outside our house. Could you stop what you're doing and bring me food? <laughs> She's amazing, that girl, honestly. Hi. Hello. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm bored. Um, I just made this for a video. What is that? <laughs> it's like... It's fondue. It's fondue. <laughs> I was just filming it, so... This looks amazing. But you can eat that, and then I can bring you actual food in a second. Are you sure? Yeah. You're I was the... going to reheat the pasta. Are you, you're amazing. Thank you. So This is so much well, cooler than I expected. Have you touched me? You can touch the car. You, I reckon you can get in the car as well. Oh, really? You don't have to, guests? but I think I can have guests. What about if I reheat pasta and I come and eat with you? Yeah, we could have dinner together, yeah. slash lunch. Nothing to see here. Just a 25 year old eating marshmallows and chocolate in broad daylight outside his house in the back of his gold jag. And my neighbour's coming out now. I'm gonna. I can't do this. My neighbour is literally coming out. This is so awkward because his car is. I don't know if you can see, but maybe five meters to my left. There he is now. I am dying inside. I don't know what's worse, we're eating dinner at half three or we're... No, it's lunch. It's late lunch because we, we haven't had lunch, lunch, have we? No, it's because... It's well, I got in the car at quarter to two. Mm. Right, so... Mm -hmm. 
bedding is down there. I'm just going to pop it on you for a second. Okay, great. I'm just, this is really good, okay? Okay, okay. What I'm going to do is pull this. Yeah. Like that. And then if you squiggle. <laughs> if you pop yourself up here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? If things go wrong, Katie. Yeah. And we have to get rid of the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is not so bad. <laughs> anyway, let me show you. I don't know how I feel about this. Watch your feet. It's quite crazy. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> the cat. So look, get yourself nice and comfy. Yeah, I'm comfy. You've got the duvet. Yeah. Shove that in there. No, I can't get it. <laughs> Maybe we have to do that first, but yeah. you oh, get the gist. Like that, and especially if you use the duvet as a bit of a mattress topper as well. Yeah. Use these handles. It's not bad. I've just thought of a genius idea actually. Why not? Now that I've got I've actually got access to the boot. I might as well just leave the duvet in there. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier. There's no point having it in my living space when I'm not using the, the boot. Come here. I've been left with our lovely cat Lando. Oh, I'm sorry. Who, by the way, don't worry, he loves cars. He's having a great time, aren't he? Back he goes. Are you gonna sleep in there? He is, he's actually gonna settle down on that duvet now, which means I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna close you in. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're in. Ah, right, now I can show you what I wanted to show you. So I do, although I was laughing about the state of this key being sort of an old Ford Escort key from the 80s. I like it actually, it's dainty, and in comparison to everything these days, which seems to have exactly the same key, it's a bit different. Um, you pop it into this very sensitive keyhole, at which point, if I press number one here, we'll go into my driving position. I love how this screen lights up here, it says Jaguar, I don't know if you can see that. And if we pop the lights on here, that's what I'm talking about. These lovely green lights, yellow dials, and it's just gorgeous. And I can switch the engine on, just about, to try and get some heating going. I'm gonna do it just for the heated seat to start with, to be honest, because, um, yeah, like I say, the, the coolant's playing up, there is none, so, um, the temperature of the car doesn't really get where it needs to be and I don't quite know how it works but basically the heating's not working. I guess I just wanted to say, let me just turn these lights off, you can just see the the green ambiance of the car and I just think it's gorgeous. You can also just press off and that nav screen goes off and it just creates this gorgeous sort of classy and, and, and quiet and comfortable place to sit and I really really love it. It's probably the best sort of nighttime ambience I've ever had in a car actually. I really really do think that. Of course we now have the joy of trying to get back into the back without breaking my spine. Ugh. I have to say I'm pretty surprised that the car started then because I've been using see all of these lights and everything for the past few hours since it got dark and uh, it's not drained the battery which is quite impressive. Okay, so let's move pillows over there. Ah, oh, you know what? This looks quite nice, actually. I'm quite, I've been quite looking forward to sleeping, actually. So this looks great. Let's just do that. And then if I can find my pajamas, then get changed quickly to put these on. I'm gonna leave my jumper on because it is a bit, it's bit cold actually and oh you guys are gonna get a great view here oh, like a strip tease oh no there's a car there evening okay I think we're almost there yep out out yes Okay, all right, 
now we're talking. Okay, well I'm I'm flat, you know, my legs are all the way out. And that's That's pretty good, you know. So that's really snug. 10 to 7. <laughs> Bit of an early night, but let's just give it a go, shall we? Guess I'll see you when I see you. Until then, it's a good night from me. <sighs> 26 minutes past 12. We have made it to the final day. And it's really cold. It's actually really cold. I've ended up sort of a bit sideways. Um, to be honest, I have actually slept for the best part of five hours or so now, which is great because it's just gone 12 o'clock. And you know what? It's not so bad. The main thing is it's a bit like, it's a bit like imagine you go camping in a conventional tent, but you're not allowed to leave your tent for 24 hours. It's sort of a bit like that, really. It's perfectly comfortable. Okay, this is not a bed. You can see that this, the back of the seats are not completely flat, they're slanted. And so lying that way with my feet down there was a little bit uncomfortable because of the sort of gap here. But yeah, you can see a lot of space in here. I never did move the seats back. I wonder what that's like actually if I leant against those. But anyway, I'm sort of lying sideways now and it's um, perfectly fine. But uh, yeah, I guess nothing really other to report than what you know, which is it's uh, it's a challenge. It's definitely a challenge. And uh, I will be grateful to get out of the car when I get out of the car. Like I say, it's in about just over 13 hours time now. I'm gonna switch this light off now because I feel kind of self-conscious. It's like half 12 in the morning and I don't know who's looking. So I'm gonna switch this back off and I guess just try and get a little bit more rest. Try and stay warm. It's getting, it is getting colder. We'll be okay. Speaking a bit. It's 7.46 in the morning. I've just turned the car on because it's really cold in here. And although I just know it's not going to heat up, I'm just hoping we can get something. I can at least put on my heated seat, which should help a little bit. I've tidied up the configuration of the car now, put the seat back up, tuck the duvet and everything away in the boot. And so now it does just feel like the car again, and I guess feels less like I've been sleeping in here for the last, well, basically 12 hours I've been trying to sleep. And I don't feel too bad, you know, I think I've, I've had enough rest um, and feel okay, but I have to say my back is not in the best shape. Anyway, hopefully I can get some heat into the car because it's a very cold morning. It was raining and then it was clear and now it's raining again. So I um, don't think it looks like the best day, but anyway, it's nice and cozy in here. I can just do with it being a bit warmer. But 7.47 now on the time. So we've got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 45. Five hours and 57 minutes now, 7.48. Five hours and 57 minutes to go. Meaning we've done over 75% of the challenge. <sighs> I'm looking forward to getting it. everyone good morning um, but sadly not the morning of the 24 challenge it's a few days later now and I have to be totally transparent and say that I didn't manage to do the full 24 hours and you can probably tell a little bit from my wheezing as to why 
I woke up in the morning in the last shot she saw because there'd been no heating going through the car and it was sort of, I guess, damp in here from you just sort of me breathing all night. Uh, it was really cold when I woke up to the extent that I had a really bad sort of chesty wheeze. And so, yeah, I decided to, to get out of the car and go inside to warm up. Not ideal. I've never failed a 24 hour challenge before. Um, but in the interest of, well, it's just how I do things. I'm not going to pretend that I did it. I didn't. I had to get out of the car and uh, go inside and have a warm shower and, and warm up. So, unfortunately, I didn't do 24 hours. What did I do, though? I probably did about 19. I think it was probably, I think it must have been about half eight when I did finally come inside. So, what, six hours or so off the mark? Five hours off the mark. Well, there, five hours, 15 minutes. So, we did just just over 19 hours in the car or so. Um, I tried turning the car back on, but just blows cold air. And so, yeah, unfortunately, I just had to get out. I just wasn't, it wasn't reasonable for me to stay in here. So, yeah, unfortunately, I failed it. But for the 19 hours that I did do in the car, it was really fun. And I hope you enjoyed it as well. <laughs> Katie was an absolute lifesaver, as were Y Food with the meal replacement drinks. Thank God for them. Thank God for my beautiful fiance for looking after me. And yeah, thank you all for watching this video. Now, the car is going back in the garage. Uh, as you'll see in the next video, we're gonna have an update on hopefully getting everything fixed for you. And we'll be able to then take the car out on the road, which is the whole point, of course. Until then, if you're not subscribed already, do make sure to hit the subscribe button now, or it's the red button below the screen, actually. Hit that and you'll see the upcoming video content with this car thanks again i'm sorry i failed you but i'll see you in the next one very soon